The first time that I ever thought about bringing on a virtual assistant was for social media. I, I uh, it's funny when I became an entrepreneur, like I thought I loved social media and everything about it. And then I quickly realized that social media is a huge piece to, you know, your business and growing your business. And so my focus on social media went from consuming to creating. And uh, that's where I kind of got stuck because I'm not really good at the creating part. And so uh, I went out and I used some other services where I would put a job ad out and then I would field 20 applications and try to, you know, take a couple of different steps to keep narrowing it down and narrowing it down through, you know, checking their work and getting on Skype and interviewing people and making sure that they understood, you know, what it was that I needed. And then after I spent about three weeks onboarding my very first virtual assistant, uh, they only lasted about two weeks. And then uh, that's when I kind of threw my hands up and I was like, man, there's no way that I can continue to spend three weeks going through the onboarding process for a virtual assistant that just doesn't work out. And so that's when um, I started asking around for different solutions and Reva Global came up and uh, you know, that's when I reached out to you guys and you guys completely changed the game on what I could do with hiring virtual assistants. You know, to be able to get the content creation off of my plate, it actually allowed me to work on the other departments of my business, which, and, and really, so that point where, and I think a lot of us entrepreneurs go through this is like, you know, we're solopreneurs for the longest time because sometimes we can't even really begin to understand what it looks like to get tasks off of our plate. And as soon as I did that the first time, it opened up my eyes completely to like, oh, what other parts of my business now can I look at to hire a virtual assistant to now take it off of my plate? Because really what it boiled down to was, I was doing it enough where I could create a checklist. And then now I could just take that checklist and I'm like, okay, Reva, what, who do you have that can, that can fill these different types of roles? And you guys did a really good job of always putting a couple of candidates in front of me. And then next thing I knew, like I had acquisitions off my plate. I had marketing off of my plate. I had transaction coordinating off of my plate. And so I was able to start just getting rid of a lot of those um, those technician type roles. So that way I can, I, I quickly moved into that manager position inside of my company and then eventually up into that entrepreneur spot. And I think all of that, you know, wouldn't have been possible had I not been able to, you know, start outsourcing a lot of these tasks to these virtual assistants. You know, we recently hired a virtual assistant to do just text messaging. And um, through those text messaging efforts, what was great is I remember the first time that I did a text messaging campaign and I thought, oh, this can't be hard. And I launched my text messaging campaign and I couldn't leave my desk for like eight hours. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not doing this. And so on top of being chained to my desk, it was living through the emotional part of seeing all of the texts that come back because the text is a higher response rate. And so I'm, you see a lot of those negative responses come back through text and it can be demotiv demotivating. Um, and so I was like, man, I've got to get this off my plate because I know that the return on investment for text messaging um, is pretty significant. And as soon as I did and the virtual assistant took that on, the next thing that happened was like, I was just getting the emails at the end of the day. That's like, hey, here's your end of the day report. Here are the people that are interested to sell. And I remember reading one of those text messages and the guy, like if at first he's like, yeah, if you give me $300,000, I'll move. And I started looking, I'm like, dang, this is a pretty hot area. That's actually a really decent number. And so I, I, I told my virtual assistant to get more information. And so she went back and forth with them for like another day or two, got the price, the motivation, the condition and the timeline. And then from there, I was like, okay, I took over, sent two texts and then I had a deal and uh, I wholesaled it. And so that was really, you know, the one that just recently sticks out that was, I invested, I, I only have a part-time VA. So I invested on the part-time VA process. Um, um, I'm sorry, I invested the part-time VA um, price mm -hmm. and then the cost of my, my campaign to pull the leads, skip trace the leads and then send the text all together. All that was about 1500 bucks, 1600 bucks. And I had a $10,000 wholesale deal within the first week of running the campaign. And so, um, and that was only one, we actually ended up locking down three deals just on that campaign alone. So I've already paid for my VA, my texting and all that for the rest of the year, just off of that one list with a virtual assistant. And I see this a lot with entrepreneurs where they'll say like, 
oh, uh, you know, using a VA just isn't worth the money. And I think what ends up happening is people think that they can just hire a VA and then that VA will automatically know their system. They'll automatically keep themselves busy. They'll automatically do like, it's just like an employee that sits next to you in your office. Like you would never bring somebody into your office and then just say, good luck. No, you're going to provide daily feedback. You're going to, there's going to be training. And so I think the one thing that I would tell everybody that, um, you know, when you bring a VA on, there's still a lot of that management and in, in cultivating the, that culture and that relationship and just getting them um, involved in your systems. And that's where I see a lot of people, they'll invest one month into a VA and then they fall off because they think that it's supposed to be like a turnkey system. Um, and it's not, it's just like hiring somebody in your office. So I, we've hired somebody in our office before. And the one thing that I would say the big difference between the VA and the person in the office was the VA, like, there was no nonsense like they come to work and they know that they're there to work and so there's none of that like downtime in between where you're shooting the bull and like like it's literally if i'm hiring them for four hours of work they're working four hours that day and it's all like it's it's very action-based and so i would say like that was the big difference for us and on top of that um the other big difference for us is like you know when you when you start to try to source work people for your for your um, business locally you're very much limited to the pool of talent that's in your area and that might not be the person that's best qualified for your business and so you know when you're going through a virtual assistant it could be any i mean you guys have hundreds of virtual assistants i'm like hey i need this and you're like i got you they've been through hundreds of hours of training and here's the, the right person for you and i would say like that's the other big difference of hiring a virtual assistant versus like trying to find somebody locally to bring into your office.